Hi friends, I'm Jeffy G. I've had Complete 15 for just a few days and I want to share with you my first impressions. Whenever Native Instruments comes out with a new release of their bundle, you always expect a lot of enhancements. In this case, I was expecting enhancements in Complete Control, but that wasn't the case. All of these new tools, whether it's chords, phrases, or leap, are in Contact 8. Now as I go through this, I'll share some perspective because, hey, Perspective, perspective. How do you use these things going forward? Who's their target audience? Are these things right for you? you? Can't ignore the fact that Contact is the most extensive sampler out there, but what are the changes from six, seven, and eight that make this different? It also raises some questions about the future of complete control. Now there's features in there that I use and I need. In particular, it's taken me a long time to adopt the complete control envelope as a way to manage MIDI. For example, I use a MIDI controller that's not from Native Instruments, so I've got mapping of all the encoders to work with all the instruments. With Complete Control, you do that once, and it applies to everything. But inside Contact 8, you have to do it multiple times for each instrument. Well, let's just start by looking at the browser. First of all, you can resize the browser window for Contact 8. That's pretty good. Another feature that's been enhanced is the way you can filter what you're looking for. You have instruments combined, tools, loops, and one-shots. Under the tools, you're going to notice two new things, chords and phrases, and this whole leap functionality I'll describe in a moment. But even just under instruments, being able to sort by brand comes in handy, because if you're like me, you use a lot of third-party contact libraries, and it's getting crowded in this browser. So if I just want to focus on native instruments, I click on native instruments. If I want to reset, I could just pick something, say, heaviosity, because I'm just looking for the heaviosity piano. So it's a better way, I think, to narrow down what you see and how quickly you filter down the results. They've added this thing at the bottom. Don't know if I like it or not. New instruments for you. Is it a sales pitch? Or or is it just drawing your attention to some of the instruments that are in contact that maybe you're not using all that much? I don't mind it. Similar to before, when you select an instrument, you get a list of presets here. You're really just hearing a preview. The previews respond quite quick because it's just playing an audio file. It hasn't actually opened in the instrument until you double click on the instrument itself. Now once you open the instrument, the previews switch to the left, and that's a change in Contact 8 from Contact 7. And I don't mind it, but historically I've opened the instrument and then browsed through the presets with the instrument fully open as opposed to using this browser on the left. But I am getting used to the idea that this is where I'm going to manage my favorites. The other two things that you'll notice right away in the browser is that you've got tools and sounds. The two things can be combined, but in the tools section, this is where you're going to be able to add chords or phrases. And then down here in the instrument section, you can add multiple instruments. Now you've always been able to do that in contact, but it was a little bit tricky. You had to set up a multi-instrument and then drag new instruments onto the right. If you really like liked the old view in Contact 7, under view here it's got classic view. That might look a little bit more familiar to you. One of the contact instruments that I didn't have before is called Diamond. Let's open up Diamond and look at the presets. And let's add a tool. Let's go into the chords tool. We'll pick Airy. So I can preview the chord progression. Every chord progression is going to populate seven of the white keys and it's going to repeat that seven every octave. You get a little representation over here of the chord, what notes are being played. Pretty handy if you don't know what an F sharp minor ninth looks like. Up on the left, you can actually change the key. It's got all the standard modes in addition to major and minor, Dorian, Mixolydian, things like that. Under settings, you can pick the playable range. By default, it starts at C1 and goes up to C4. If you want greater range than that, you can make those changes. And you can change any chord. I can hit random, come up with a new chord. The other thing I can do is click on the little magnifying glass and pick the genre, type, style of chord and select a different preset chord. You see it changing here to a D minor ninth. So although there are 134 preset chord progressions in chords, it really is limitless. Uh, you can change any of the chords and create more presets, or you can start with a preset and just modify it to be your own. One of the nice features here is this strum capability, strumming up or down. So if I uh, increase this, controlling the timing of the strumming. 
And it's got a humanization control, which is nice. And you can pick the default octave. With both the chord and the phrases tool, you can drag the MIDI into your DAW in a couple different ways. You can see in this case, it's added the piano seven times, each one of those chords on a separate track. I just clicked on the random button for the chords. Of course, you can play those chords in any order you want to create your own song. Let's say you wanted to use this chord progression, but not with a native instrument's sound. You could drag the chords individually onto a track. There's the first chord. Maybe I want the third chord after that. And on this track, I just have a piano. And I could combine those. Nice part about being able to bring those things into your DAW is once they are there, you can you can modify this chord progression any way you want. You can shorten the notes or change the notes. So you don't want that note. That gives you a lot of flexibility. Then you can think of native instruments chords. It's just kind of the starting point to your composition. Exporting MIDI, easy. Importing MIDI, doesn't look like that's available. So within the browser, I changed the instrument to Melted Vibes. And let's take a look at phrases instead of chords. To do that, I click on the tool, phrases, and I get a long list of presets, 181. Now some people might say, well, 181 phrases, that's a lot or that's not enough. Think of them as just a starting point. So like chords, the phrases are assigned to the keys in an octave, the white keys. If you look closely here on the right, you can see that I'm pressing a note. A note on my keyboard is executing a different phrase depending on what note I play. Much like the chord functionality, I can change the key, uh, the root note. I've got some settings that I can adjust in terms of the key range. I've got some control over the phrase, although I can't create a phrase from scratch. I can rotate how that phrase starts. So if I click on rotate, you can see it's sort of changing the start position of that phrase. And I can invert the phrase. Over here on the right, I've got several things I can control. The degree of swing, the tempo, whether it's in half time, double time, which octave I'm gonna hear that phrase being executed, and something called dynamics, which is assigned to the modulation wheel that will let you change the sound of the phrase being executed if you're playing it in a real live time situation. And like the chords, I can drag the MIDI from a phrase into my DAW and hear it on a different instrument. That gives you the opportunity not just to use sounds and instruments beyond native instrument, but it also gives you the ability to edit the MIDI that's generated by that phrase. And much like chords, you can pull many phrases into your DAW, join them together, make modifications, but you cannot import MIDI from your DAW or another source into the phrases tool within Contact 8. Now, by now, it should be obvious that you can have multiple instruments, not just one. If you wanted to combine, say, the sound or a preset from Melted Vibes with another, you'd click on the plus sign here and be able to choose that other instrument. They've made that easier in this thing called Combined. Combined is a preset of sounds, possibly multiple sounds, and tools. So let's say I pick the new Conflux instrument. Just open this. And what we have here is a curated combination of phrases with a preset. So I think those combined features are kind of cool. You might be creating your own, saving them, reusing them, but it's really just a way to merge together 
the two things you see up here. And I just want to remind everyone that what you're editing on the right or in the middle of the Contact 8 browser depends on what you've selected over here on the left. So if I select the instrument sound, I'm changing the preset. So I choose a different one. Hard to get past it playing the preview there every time I click. But I didn't change the phrases. Or you can do the opposite. You can click on the phrase tool, click on random, choose a different set of phrases for that particular sound. Now I think the phrases tool is really good. In fact, I don't know too many other vendors that have come to market with something like this. If you've used Scalar or Epic or Melody Sauce or one of those tools, you'll find it's not as focused on phrases as it is on chords and chord progressions. Sometimes you can get it to generate a lead line or a bass line, but it's not quite as extensive as this phrases concept. So I like it. Something close to phrases that I've seen in Logic recently, in Logic 11, is the Session Keyboard Player. By default, it starts with a phrase called freely. But there's only a few phrases that you can choose from. There's freely, broken chords, block chords, and arpeggiated. So they haven't fully embraced this idea. But in Logic, the phrases are tightly integrated with the global chord track. So there's a lot more going on here. Let's just take a quick look at Leap. In the case of Leap, it's been described as a sampler within a sampler. And if you've watched other videos on this, what you'll understand is that it assigns up to 16 samples to keys in your MIDI controller keyboard. And I think what's going on here is that this is almost a groove box type tool where you can pick the key, uh, pick some samples uh, from either your native instruments environment or apparently outside, but I haven't tried that yet and I'll show you how that works. So you can pick the key, the starting key, and you can execute these samples interactively to create your own song or your own composition. The eight encoders, which are prevalent on all native instruments. Instruments, by default, assigned to certain macros, but you can um, you can assign them to some weird things, like it's got this freak show thing here. Uh, so you can interactively change and play with it as you go. But one way to think of Leap is just a multi-sampler. So you've got play view, you've got this edit view where you can see the actual samples that are being executed, and you can modify these samples. You can change the send effects and you can have performance effects that are generally assigned to the black on your MIDI keyboard. Every leap preset combination is called a kit. Could be drums, samples, all kinds of stuff. It's pretty easy to replace any of the samples. Let's say you pick one. edit, you get to see the sample. Let's say I want to replace that with a one shot. I get to see all the products that are in my expansions in Native Instruments. I can pick one, find something different, and just drag that in. And it'll replace it for that particular sample key. There we go. So it's pretty easy to build your own Leap. But let's get behind the concept of Leap. There's really two things going on here. This is being used as Native Instruments multi-sampler, which are very popular these days. There's other competing products like Cube by Lunacy. There's stuff in Logic. Lots of people have embraced this multi-sampler idea. But also, it's being positioned as something to give you a jump forward. And that's where the leap comes from. Your producer, composer, and you're looking for some inspiration. The idea behind this tool is to give you a head start. That's where the leap concept comes into play. I think what you're seeing here is that there's two different audiences. The first audience would be singer-songwriters, composers, 
People that need tools to help them compose music within the complete bundle. Things like chords, phrases, and leap are all designed as MIDI generation tools to help inspire you to write songs. There's another audience that's been using the complete bundle for a long time, and what they're most interested in are the instruments themselves. The sounds, the qualities, they already know how to compose, they already know how to produce. They're just looking for new sounds, expanding their options, and using some of the latest technology. Hey, I've tried to make this informative, but also brief. Later, I might do a deeper dive into some of these advanced features in Contact 8, and we're going to see how this evolves over the next couple of years. If you like this video, click on the like button, consider subscribing to the channel, leave comments, I appreciate feedback, and I always respond to everybody. Thanks for watching.